this is Kate Northrup. Welcome back to the Money Love Story series. I'm the author of Money, A Love Story, and as part of my book launch, I'm having these interviews with people I love, like my friend Elizabeth Ryder, Thank you. who's here, and she is a wellness entrepreneur. She's built an amazing team of other wellness entrepreneurs. Her background is, well, actually, your background is not this, but what she does <laughs> now is she uh, went to the Institute of Integrated Nutrition. She's a health coach, and she has built a six-figure residual income, which I think is really impressive. Thank you. And not many health coaches can say that. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, just first of all, what's your background with money? What did you learn about money growing up? What was your experience as a child around money? Yeah, I think I had, um, I don't know if there's a, such thing as an average experience, but... <laughs> Yeah, just grew up in an average middle class family. Didn't have a lot of extra money, but you know we weren't uh, in extreme poverty. Just really average middle class family. Started working when I was you know thirteen or fourteen, being a dance assistant to make some extra money for fun clothes. Um, <laughs> you know, worked all through high school, through college. Just, I've always had a job, so my experience with money has always been um, that there's not an overabundance of it, um, and you have to work really hard for your money. So that's what you learned growing up? Yes, that's what I learned growing up. And then I know you went on to get recruited and work for Ernst & Young. Yes. Right? Yes. And you were traveling all the time yeah. and working Yes. So that was like a lot of hours. That was great. You were um, working hard crazy. for your money. <laughs> I was working very hard for my money, but it was an amazing experience. Yeah. So I uh, started in Big Four Accounting out of college, and that was an amazing experience. But you work a lot in Big yeah. Four Accounting. Yeah. Uh, which is good, and they also pay very well. So it was really exciting out of college. You know, I'd worked all through college, and um, you know, always had you know twenty dollars for groceries, or you know, it was very, very yeah. um, budgeted. And when I got my job at Ernst and Young, you know, we worked a lot, but they also treated us very well, and it got a really great paycheck. So yeah. that was amazing. So that was my first taste of um, you know really good paychecks flowing in the door. And, and the taste of that, it was fun. Yeah. Was there ever a moment because you grew up experiencing, um, you know, not like, like you said, not poverty, yeah. but just kind of not tons of money. Was there ever a moment when you kind of, as you were growing in Ernst & Young and then growing your own business and kind of creating more abundance for mm -hmm. yourself, that you were like felt pushed up against what you were raised with versus what you were creating for yourself? Or was that just more of an easy transition? Yeah, that's such an interesting question. I think, you know, my parents are amazing and they've always really pushed us to create your own success and to be successful. Mm -hmm. So that always felt really good and they've always been so encouraging. I think it's more um, not growing up with a ton of money as I started to make more money and I would buy more expensive things that would never have been an option for me when I was younger. Yeah. I think I had a lot of, I would start to feel guilty. Okay. And then have to reevaluate, well, why do I feel guilty? Because this is my money and I worked really hard for yeah. this money. Um, and going on some trips, I took a trip to Thailand when I was 24 um, that I paid, you know, with cash, and that was like an amazing feeling. I'd never been able to do anything like that totally. before. So, um, you know, I think in my 20s it was more feeling guilty for buying higher priced items um, that I wanted, uh, and working through not feeling guilty because you know I worked hard for that money and it's my money and yeah. I, can, I can do what I want with it. Yeah, yeah. totally. And as you have um, grown your business, so mm -hmm. so tell me what happened in the transition mm. between working for Ernst & Young and then becoming an entrepreneur. I mean, that's yeah. in the wellness industry. Yeah. Like, what happened Totally there? different. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, my family is very entrepreneurial, so I, I think I always okay. knew that I would do something. And, and it just came to me at the right time. And I was working in Big Four Accounting, but accounting, uh, my degree's in math, <laughs> so not even accounting. <laughs> accounting definitely wasn't my passion. Loved the, I loved the people aspect of it though, loved the team, yeah. loved the business side of it, and um, had been approached by a woman to say, you know, come help me run this business, and it was my out, and it was in the health okay. and wellness industry, so I took it. And it wasn't until a few years later that I found integrated nutrition. I didn't even know what a health coach was. I was like, found this school, I thought it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, didn't even really know how I was going to make that into a business, and just kept putting one foot in front of the other that felt good. Cool. where I could feel feel myself being pulled towards something. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, when, when people say, well, what made you decide to enroll in the Institute for Integrated Nutrition? It was like, I just felt really right. <laughs> you know, yeah. I didn't I didn't have a vision of what my business would look like right now when I enrolled. I just let it unfold in front of me. Yeah. yeah. So what does money mean for you? Because you are very ambitious. You know, um, Liz and I work together with USANA Health Sciences. Yeah. That's how we met. Yeah. And, you know, we, we 
have spent a lot of time on the phone kind of sharing dreams yeah. and goals and ambitions and strategies as well. Mm -hmm. So what what is that that drives you? Why is money important in your life? <sighs> I, oh, man. I don't think there's... <laughs> 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 this interview is not long enough to talk about uh, yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Because um, to me, money is just energy. And money is neutral. And I think a lot of people think, you know, want to associate money with being good or money with being bad. What we have to know is that money is neutral and it's how it's used that can be perceived as good or bad. Yeah. So I think, you know, a lot of people, people push money away because they think it's quote unquote, quote bad. And a lot of people are, you know, trying to pull money in because they think it's so good. And, you know, for me, I've always tried to come to this neutral spot with money mm -hmm. where it's not a source of happiness. However, you know, experiences are a source of happiness and oftentimes you need money to get the experiences that you want. Maybe yeah. on a certain trip, not every experience, but certain trips, you know, the home environment that you want to create, yep. um, even the business I want to create. Uh, you know, I never had to take out, take out a loan or not a crazy amount of money, but things, you know, cost money. They the do. video camera that we're using to tape this costs mm. some money. Yes, it does. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, we're in Salt Lake City right now for this convention and I had to buy a plane ticket to come here. Yep. So, um, you know, I've, I've always tried to view money as neutral. Um, and the more, especially in, in what we do with USANA, the more that energy I can create around money, yeah. the more positive energy I can create about, around money, the more people I can help. I love that. Yeah. I love that. The more positive energy you can create around money, the more people you can help. Mm -hmm. That's a great quote. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad. So any other, like, any other moments or um, challenges or kind of like golden nuggets that you've had along your mm -hmm. journey of your own money love story? Because yeah. I would say, you know, we were talking before we came on camera, yeah. Liz has not had a particularly tumultuous relationship with money, which no. is why I wanted to interview <laughs> you, actually, because it's really steady, you know? Mm. And um, you shared with me before we got on camera some advice your parents gave you before yes. heading off to college, which I thought was just it's fairly obvious, but like nobody ever told me that. Yes. <laughs> and it's great. So will you share that with Yeah, with my parents viewers? are awesome. They're very practical. And they had just <laughs> always said, as a, you know, I worked all through the summers and they helped when they could. And, and, and I worked while I was at school too, but they had always said, always pay your fixed expenses up front. And I've always approached life this way yeah. since. And it's, I think it's really benefited me. Um, so when I went to college, I would work all summer and I would pay my rent for the entire year the first week I was there. Your and landlords so must have loved you. They did, they you. loved me. But <laughs> Best I saw, tenant ever. Yeah, I saw roommates, you know, struggle like every month, where am I gonna come up with my, my, my rent right. money? And I, I remember thinking, how do you not have your rent money? Like you you know you have to pay it every month. Like how do you not have it? <laughs> this is not a surprise. Um, but I've always worked, you know, I've worked since I was 14 and, yeah. I've, and I've always, you know, taken good care of my money and, you know, had it in envelopes. So I think, you know, that speaks volumes too about the way people take mm -hmm. care of their money, even from when they're a young child, just, you know, if they keep it organized and it's not just floating around the bedroom and that kind right, of stuff. Right, it's a respect thing. Yeah. So I've always paid my fix. And even we had, um, I lived with uh, girls for a few years. We had like a house account. I would pay my money into that at the beginning of the year for, you know, the phone and, you know, all yeah. of the things. And it was just all ready. Yeah, so it's just all ready so that I didn't ever have to think about that. And, you know, coming out of college, getting a job and, and then even getting married, David and I have always approached um, our money that way too, where just because it's coming in doesn't mean we can spend it. Right. You know, we've, we've, we've always, you know, been building and so that we have, we never have to think about the mortgage coming out or, you know, right. something like that. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And something else you were talking about is um, that, uh, you know, the transparency around money, you know, and, and as entrepreneurs, I don't think that we have to go around on our website saying like, now some people do, and I actually think it's awesome, yeah. like um, Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income mm -hmm. writes down exactly what he makes every single month, exactly what his expenses were, wow. from what source. I mean, it's really cool because he's wanting to show, you know, passive income is really yeah. a thing. And that's motivating. And this yeah. is exactly how I do it. And yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. So I don't think everybody has to do that. Yeah. But you had some interesting things to say about transparency and just honesty yeah. uh, around entrepreneurship and money. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think, you know, especially just getting into entrepreneurship and I would, it seems for me, I don't know why to be focused in New York City. I'm not uh, begging on any particular city or people, but just yeah. I would hear about these people in New York saying that they make six figures and all this kind of stuff. And I would, you know, look at what they did and I never understood how can they actually make six figures by just coaching people or by just doing this. And you know what's come to find out after getting to know some different people that they're, a lot of it is just dishonest. And yeah. I think especially as women um, and being in the health and wellness industry and being very heart centered, um, you know, you take everything at face value and I yeah. would never assume that somebody was being dishonest about that kind of, of stuff. <laughs> so it's, you know, that kind of stuff is interesting just to, um, 
you know, and we're obviously involved in USANA, and I always tell people never, never think something is a get-rich-quick scheme, that it's right. going to happen, you know, right away. But, you know, in direct selling, you know, I, I don't give people, you know, exactly what I make, but I have, I've gotten to the point where I'm okay with telling them I have six figures recurring, so yeah. I, I could totally retire. I have six yeah. figures coming in every year. Um, and, you know, with a public direct selling company, I think that's a little bit more transparent. People know that that's actually true. Exactly. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of dishonesty, so I think people just, you know, I don't want to put a warning around it, but just to really evaluate opportunities that you have and make sure yeah. that it's an honest opportunity. Yeah, no, I think that's really yeah. smart. So for you, as you grow your business, um, your wellness business, having your programs online, USANA, you know, maybe starting a family, things like that, like what are the next frontiers for you when it comes to money? What's your growth <sighs> edge right now? Yeah, it's so interesting. Um, just in the past few years, just donating money mm -hmm. and figuring out what we can give. You know, I'm married, I've been married for five years, so um, it's not just my decision. Yeah. Which is a whole different topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which totally. is really good. I mean, I, I'm lucky enough to have an amazing husband, and we're very much partners yeah. in, in everything that we decide. And we have the same vision of things. Like, we were going to give somebody at Christmas, and, you know, I said, Well, how much do you think? And he just said the number. I was like, That's exactly what I was thinking. That's great. <laughs> so, um, you know, giving and investing, you know, I think at some point, you know, we have some investments, but just becoming a lot more educated around, yeah. um, you know, when you have uh, dollars to put places where it's going and, and what it's making and, and what you're doing You do need to be it. smart about that. Um, so learning more about that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I feel like I know a lot about making money, and now my whole next journey is, is going to be a lot about what to do with that money. Cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add? about your money love story or? I don't think so. I just, I got a preview of this book and I love it. You should be oh. so proud of it. Thank you. It's, it's, I mean, the money part of it's great. The love story part of it's <laughs> great because Kate and Mike actually came to stay with me in Denver. When yes, we, you we were one of our first yes. stops on the Freedom Tour. And we didn't know each other very well. No, we did not. I had never met Mike. I know, but you said come stay, so I was like, okay. I said, I we had met <laughs> through USANA. I had never even really spent that much time together. No. And I said, well, if you need a place to stay in Denver, come. And you guys did. Yeah. And we had a great time. We did. So, and I've seen your guys' relationship unfold over the past few years. So reading that book, I just loved it. Aww, I think it's, but the money you. part too, I really think people need to read it because you, in such a nice way, you know, you're not picking on any one particular person. You kind of call out this, this uh, phenomenon of people saying they make a lot of money, but they don't. Yeah. And, and just being your honesty in this book, I think people will learn a lot about money and about relationships, but I think another takeaway, especially for women kind of in like their 20s, 30s, just that transitional period of life, your honesty in this book is amazing. You need to know that. Thank you. And just knowing that you can, other women can be that honest too, I think you've given people such a gift of saying, look, you can be honest. Look, I'm still here, like I didn't burst into flames. <laughs> Um, no, your honesty in this book is just is really, really commendable. I really, really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Thank yeah, you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing your money love story. Thanks for having me. And if you want to hear more money love stories, visit moneyalovestory.com. And by the way, you can also find Liz at elizabethrider.com. And when you buy this book at moneyalovestory.com, there's a link over to Amazon, you'll get access to my free two-hour online event called A Course in Having Enough and I'll have guest teachers on there, Marianne Williamson, Barbara Stanny, and Amanda Steinberg, who is the CEO and founder of dailyworth.com. So that's gonna be an awesome event. And grab the book, go hear some other money love stories. Thank you, Liz, Thank you. I so appreciate it. I so appreciate you. Thank you so much.